Hi, I'm Julie Piaz, the team leader of the JWP Group at Remax, and today we have the pleasure of sitting with Kirsten Erickson on my team. She is one of my buyer's agents, and we're going to just talk a little bit about the difference between being a listing agent and being a buying buyer's agent, because I don't think people necessarily understand the difference. I think they think they're calling a realtor, and it's a realtor. All are created equal. All are the same. And we know very, very specifically that we each do very different jobs within my team. So Kirsten, why don't you introduce yourself before we have a little conversation here? Well, my name is Kirsten Erickson. I am a buyer specialist with Julie Winter Paez Group. And I've been in the business for 40 years. Makes me feel old. So, but I've been You're around the block. <laughs> you started bit. when you were 10. Yeah, I was 10. <laughs> um, but I work now specifically with buyers. And as a buyer's agent, I represent buyers. So Excellent. I'm really a buyer's representative. I think that is a fantastic way of putting it. So one of the things when I sit down with sellers and I talk to them about listing their property for sale, one of the things that I'll often tell them is, so if I'm out in the field listing and running around trying to market properties, if I get a phone call from a buyer who wants to go to see that property, sometimes it's very difficult to be able to work on the sell side, represent the seller's best interest, as well as then go out and show the property and try to take care of the buyer. I think the buyer's re representation, if you are a buyer serious about buying, especially in a market that you don't understand, you want somebody in your corner, not the person that's representing the seller. <laughs> you want the person that's solely representing your best interest. And that's pretty much what you do all day, every day, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. and I agree totally. Yeah. There's so many different issues, especially in our market. We're dealing with septic systems, we're dealing with wells, and it's good to have a, a, someone on your side that's talking about those inspections. So like, is the septic system, is it a concrete tank? Is it a metal tank? Would a listing agent kind of bring that up? Maybe, maybe not. Where I would bring that up and say, well, what's the benefits and, and how you would want this inspected? Yeah, one of the things we talk about at a as a team sometimes is I think we use the example a lot is if you get a speeding ticket, when yeah. you go to the court to talk to the judge about trying to get out of the speeding ticket, do you want the police officer that gave you the ticket to represent you? Absolutely not. You want to have your own party at the table talking about what your best needs and your interests are. Um, if we wanted to just give them a few nuances about the contract. So one of the places where a buyer's agent or a buyer's representative and a seller's agent might disagree would be um, potentially inspections. Yeah. Now, we all know in this market it's different because you know, as a buyer's rep, you probably are having a lot of conversations about how do I just win? How do I get the house? Yeah. Um, and part of that is a little bit of chaos right now. But in normal markets, well, in this one too, some of those nuances are very different to a seller and a buyer. For example, um, if you're giving a, a, a buyer or a seller the right to cure, that can be a very big difference between what that means to a buyer and a seller. Mm -hmm. So for example, we do home inspection, buyer's rep goes out, they do the inspection, they find out that there is maybe a crack, a crack in something or there's an issue with the cement foundation, there's cracks in the cement wall. Um, as a buyer's rep, how do you generally handle that? Or the difference that you might feel versus me. I might say, well, those cracks have been there for a hundred years and the house has never moved. Why is that suddenly a problem today? Okay. Or as your perspective might be a little different than mine. Yeah, my, yes. I, I would talk to the buyer and see what their knowledge is too, because every buyers have different knowledges, yeah. you know, knowledge base on construction. Um, and if, if it's something that the inspector is putting it out there as something that could be potentially be pretty bad, mm -hmm. we'd want to have an expert come in and take a look at it, have another third party come out and look at it so that we know what we're dealing with yeah. and decide, do I want it fixed? How do, how do I want to handle it? The buyer wants to yeah. handle it. The seller may say, ah, oh, it's nothing. We'll just give you a credit. Well, the buyer may not want to do that. And it's yeah. good to have someone on your side to help you see both sides or all sides of the you got it so if i'm working for the seller you sure and you sure enough are going to imagine that if the seller is telling me that's not a big deal it's been like that for 100 years that that is what they are going to want me to represent to that buyer so again having somebody in your corner to help you navigate how to handle those hiccups along the way i think is huge maybe another area where a seller's agent and a buyer's agent might look at the contract slightly differently would be um, the whole section on the real estate condition report. 
the purpose of the real estate condition report is for that seller to disclose everything that they are aware of that could be a defect to that property. So we're chugging along here and something comes up on the title policy where a neighbor might have an easement or a shared driveway or something that wasn't disclosed on a real estate condition report. As a buyer's agent, you're probably gonna look at that a little bit different from me. I'm gonna be more like, hey, the seller said it's never been a problem, everybody shares the expenses, it's no big deal. As a buyer's rep, you might look at that a little bit differently. Oh, sure, as a buyer's rep, I'd probably want to talk with the title company to see, is this recorded? Um, has it been there for a long time? Find out, are there maintenance fees that yeah. people pay? Um, is there a recorded roadway or maintenance agreement? Is it word of mouth? Is it, and give the, the buyer all of this data so the buyer knows what they're getting into. It, do they want to accept a, a gentleman's agreement? Yeah. Do they want it in writing now? Yep. You know, things can be worked out, but you have to have the knowledge of how to work it out. I think that's so important. I think you, it seems your job, my job is always to give the seller all the data and information I can so they can make a good decision. And your job is to give the buyer all the data and exactly. information. I think a lot of people sometimes think that the two roles are meant to be um, somewhat conflicting. Like you're in their corner and I'm in their corner. I don't think good professional people look at it that way. No, not at all. Our goal is to keep the transaction moving forward, but to also make sure that each of our parties independent are taken care of as well. Would you agree with I, that? I agree with that totally. I mean, at the end of the day, we want to put a deal together. You want your buyer to get the house. I want my seller to sell, but we also want to make sure that everybody's eyes are wide, wide open as they go through the transaction mm -hmm. together. Right. Yeah. Right. And that is why it, the, on a buyer side, you want to have someone in your corner versus, you know, I, we do get the calls many times that I want to talk to the listing agent because the listing agent knows everything. Well, they do know a lot, but as a buyer's agent, you'll know that I know the questions to ask mm -hmm. that maybe you as the buyer don't know what questions to ask. Absolutely. And as a, as a person that specifically and only works with buyers, your focus is laser beam focused on yeah every new listing that comes on the market, every new property that comes on the market. I can't tell you, I think last year we did the stats and our buyer's agents put on over, I think 80,000 miles, close to 100,000 miles on their vehicles. <laughs> they did over 100 video showings. We did over 900 properties were viewed by my team specifically so that the chances of one of these guys not having seen a property, especially in this competitive market, was pretty much slim to none so that even if you you may not have had boots on the ground. If it's a hot listing, chances are one of your compadres did that you mm -hmm. can pull information from. So versus a listing agent who might be half of the time list looking at listings and the other half of the time maybe looking at a house here or there, you know, when you have somebody that's only doing one job, the job gets done. Oh, sure better than somebody who's split laser focus here, 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 here. Yeah. Um, you know, what do they say? Uh, master of, master or, Great at one, what is that? Master of none. I yeah. I'm a jack of all trades, master of none, I think yeah. is what I'm trying to say. But I think um, we wanted to just share that a little bit with you guys because I get the call too a lot of, you know, can you run out and show me this property? And a lot of times I'll say, I cannot, I'm not in a position right now, but I'm going to have you one of my buyer's agents who's laser focused on the buyer side of the transaction work with you. They will be your boots on your ground. They will be your personal shopper and they will help guide you through the process. Because um, again, our goal is to have every buyer have a five-star experience so that they are so excited. They want all their friends and family to buy up here. So. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Bring your community to the Northwoods because we'll take you. Um, anything else you think I forgot that you think is super important that we should be talking to people about? Well, the other thing I just want to point out, well, it goes off of what you had said yeah. in that um, we have our boots on the ground. And I hear from so many buyers when I'm talking to them, oh, you've been in that house? Yeah, I have. Well, then, you know, because I've been right now, especially with the listings down, I've been in almost everything that's on the market. Yep. So when you call, I can talk pretty much from firsthand experience about it. And if not, we can do the video tour and I can get you in so that you do see it without having to come up here. 
Absolutely, which is huge, especially in a market that's as competitive as this one right now is. I think right now we are down to less than a month's supply of inventory, which for us, you know, we've always said the, the Northwoods is different from most markets, but right now we are not any different than anybody else. And um, as a buyer, we've got checklists to win in a bidding war and a negotiating war. We've got a buyer strategy. We've got a list of services of things we do for all of our buyers. And again, um, our goal is to help you win, but to help you win with your eyes wide open. Right. so that um, you know exactly what you're getting into. Um, so again, if you have any questions about um, buyer's representation, if you're looking for somebody really to be in your ground and to be your personal shopper, we would love for you to give the team a call so I can assign you one of my fantastic buyer's agents. And um, they can help you realize the dream of having a home in the North Woods. And you can call Kirsten. All of her contact information is here as well. I uh, look forward to seeing you in the North Woods. Thank you. And as always, call us directly. We love to talk real estate. And um, give us a call. We'll, we'll hook you up.